Good evening and welcome back to Byline. This is a public affairs show sponsored by the Amherst League of Women Voters and Amherst Media. It's an opportunity for us to uh, get to know our town councilors, our newly elected state legislators, and uh, as our uh, town government evolves from our charter to an actually operating government, there's a lot to learn and a lot of things that we're exploring. And today's guest is our District 1 Town Councilor, Sarah Schwartz. And she does have a compatriot with her because there are two town councilors. But she's here this evening solo uh, because she was selected by the other members of the Committee on Outreach Communications and Appointments mm -hmm. as the chair. And so uh, it's a very important committee. But before we dig into that, just a little bit here. Uh, your family has been farming the same farm in Amherst for 100 years, we celebrated just, just this year. Yep, this year we turned 100 years old. So it's my husband's family's farm, and yep, we, we did it. I remember being really young and thinking, how old will I be when this farm turns 100? 100. Well, here you are. And here I am. <laughs> and the kids are... <laughs> So I two children. Um, my eldest is 19, 19, and then my youngest, Max, is 15. So very good. Yeah. And who knew that was coming along? Who knew? <laughs> who knew? Exactly. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, and town government is not uh, new to you either. Uh, tell us what you uh, did in town before town council. So in the beginning, I started. Somebody said, "I think there's you should a great be. book that started that way." In the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Mm, yes. So, <laughs> um, so somebody said, I think you should be on town meeting. And at that time, I think I was maybe, I don't know, like maybe 26 or 27. And I was oh. like, town meeting, right? So I went on and it was fabulous. Mm -hmm. And I loved it. And I was definitely involved. And so I was on town meeting for um, definitely over a decade. And then after that, I'm a farmer. Um, the Agricultural Commission was something that I was interested in, and I served on that and eventually was vice chair of the mm -hmm. AgCom. And then later on, I got a call and I was asked by the moderator if I would like to serve on the Finance Committee for a year to finish out someone else's term, and that was fascinating. Great. And so did you seek that out, or they just called you? It was very funny. They they just called me, and I was in the middle of a dinner. I had a ton of family over, wow. and so um, I was like, are, are, me? <laughs> are you sure? So but it was you must great. have felt pretty good about that. I mean, basically, uh, you, you obviously performed in a way that caught people's attention, and you didn't even have to go after that, because that's a prize seat, um, being on finance, finance committee, committee. is a prize seat, and at that point, I, I had been thinking, wow, I would love to do that, and of course, it's a stepping stone at that time to be a select board member. Uh -huh, and that was, right. I remember walking into town hall one time and seeing the picture of everyone and thinking, I want to be there someday. Like, I, I just, I love this. And, and so, you are now. And I am now. <laughs> I, it happened, which yeah. still, sometimes I just think, wow, that's amazing that that dream happened. That's great. Well, congratulations, and uh, thank you for coming on to the show. It's Let's my dig in on this committee because yes. it's got three charges. Two of them are kind of related the outreach and the communications. Mm -hmm. Let's come back to that because mm -hmm. the big, big area that you guys have a lot of decisions to make. Uh, is about appointments. Absolutely. Uh, because uh, the town manager makes some appointments, yes. the president of the council makes appointments, some appointments are from the council members themselves, others yes. are people from the community. So let's see if we can help our viewers kind understand how this is going to un unfold. So let's start with from the very beginning. You want to be a volunteer for the town serving on some kind of a board or a commission or whether, whatever. How do you start? So I would say that the best thing to do is to go on to the town website, if that's possible. Um, and when you're on the town website, you will be able to click on boards and committees. And either or, sometimes it's the first time that you click on, you will see an advertisement for there are vacancies on this committee, that committee. And then it will lead you to something, to a place that's electronic, and it's a community activity form. 
Mm -hmm. So it's a very simple form. I know I was afraid the first time someone said I had to fill it out. I was like, oh no, this is going to be complicated. This is going to be long. It's not. Yeah. It's, it's fairly simple. And so you would fill out your community activity form. It has a place for you to check off not just one board or committee, but if you're interested in several, several things you think, I think I might fit here, you mm -hmm. now can do that on your community activity okay. form. So you don't have to submit a second form for the th second committee you or the third or the fourth. You used to have to, and I can tell you. now you can't. Right. And, and now you don't have to, excuse me. You do me. not. You can just do it on that form. Okay. And it's no longer paper. I remember when they were paper. Paper. Okay. Yeah. So now the uh, town manager has before him a list of people who are interested mm -hmm. in serving. He knows there's an opening or two or whatever on mm -hmm. a particular board. So now he has a group of people that he can consider. Yes. What does he do next? So this is actually, this may sound, so before they would be put out in a certain way. We had a different form of government. Now that we have the charter, right now all of them are staying with the town manager until we've actually figured out the process of how we're, which appointing members are, are going to do what and how we're going to mm -hmm. give these CAFs. Okay. So I believe that Because not all appointments are made by the same authority. No. So okay. some, authority, some authority goes to the president, and the president has the authority over certain appointments. Yeah. And then the town manager, there are some appointments that are exclusively his. Mm -hmm. And then there are some that are the town council's appointments. Okay. So... Um, Right now, we are trying to, we're looking at what's in our purview, mm -hmm. which is um, participatory budget, rank okay. choice voting, mm -hmm. um, planning board, and zoning. Zoning. So Where does finance committee fit? So here's a very interesting thing. So to make this even more confusing mm -hmm. for people, there are some committees that actually have part of their members appointed by the town manager. And some, they also have another half or a quarter of yeah. that done by the town council. Mm -hmm. So um, that's... So finance committee would be an example? Finance committee is something that is completely different because when the charter was written, it tried to capture, you know, a, a large scope of things, yeah. but not everything was captured. And if you look at charges for things, some things are not quite clear. So originally, when we all were seated on the town council, it seemed apparent that the appointing person to appointed the town councilors to finance committee was the president. Mm -hmm. Now, we also have residents. That's what we all decided was we put together that charge. There would also be residents on finance committee. Yep. It seemed at that time that it was fairly clear that it would be uh, town council who would appoint those residents. Mm -hmm. Now it not, doesn't seem so clear. So now it has gone to another committee, which is Rules and rules Procedures. Yeah. Um, and the idea, what's going on right now, is deciding should the president actually be the one who appoints the residents as well. And then my committee, Outreach, Communications, and Appointments, is saying, I think this is still ours. And I think there's also a discussion on whether or not it should be the chair of Finance Committee who appoints them, only because Finance Committee is there's a really steep learning curve. It's it's complex, mm -hmm. and there's a there's a lot to learn. And um, it's good to be able to have someone on finance committee who knows exactly everything that's going on there, yep. to be able to to choose a person and to be able to bring them along. So this is still sort of up in the air, but I expect yeah. by maybe so next the charter Sunday, was clear that there should be some residents of the community who are non-voting members on the mm -hmm. finance committee, but it didn't say how they get appointed. It simply said clearly. they were town council appointments, but okay. that's gotten a little but fuzzy. But within the town council, one. it could be the president's appointments. Mm -hmm. It could be the appointments, your committee mm -hmm. that could make those appointments. Yes. And um, it could also be informed by the work of the rules committee. Yes. So basically the council president, you as chair, yeah and um, Alyssa, as chair of the Rules Committee, yeah. have to work together yes. and guide the council through that yes. conversation yes. to make that decision. And once that decision is made, that'll become a rule of procedure, yes. and that's how it will unfold over time. Now, the budget's being put together even as we speak. Yes. So, so this is another you're under the gun thing. to get that piece resolved. Yes. So usually what happens when you're appointed to finance is that you come in generally at the beginning of the, the budget 
process. Mm -hmm. It, even though it's very difficult, when I mean, your first year you go through it, it's really difficult to you know grasp everything. You start at the beginning, you go through the middle, you get to the end. You have a you have so a been sense the of whole the entire process yes, from start to, to finish. finish, which yeah. really does help. Yeah. Um, right now we're you know we're smack dab in the middle of it, and mm -hmm. we're heading towards the end. So a discussion that we're having is, is it fair to someone to put them right in the middle of a budgeting process when they really haven't been through the, the beginning with the rest of the right. committee? Um, is that just too much? And yeah. then appointments right now, the way that the charter has done them is that all existing appointments are actually up at the end of June and new appointments start July 1st. So it's conceivable that someone who has jumped into the middle of this struggle to get themselves to the end may not be appointed, appointed again, again. The, and know. that would just I think that would be really discouraging and to the, people and nobody wants to And do the that. appointments that would start with the beginning of the second budget cycle mm -hmm. how long is that term? Well so this is very interesting this is also something <laughs> you'll be hearing from us I would say in the next two meetings is that originally it was set at one um, the feeling that I think Andy Steinberg expressed I also expressed is that that first year is really for learning. It's a learning. It's a, a learning and it's curve. a lot of yeah. learning. And then you ha you're much more confident in your second year. Okay. So, but then so originally some people thought, well, three years, three years is good because then mm -hmm. by your third year you're ready to mentor people and you you really got it yeah. going on there. Um, but then you get to town council where we were elected the inaugural town council for three years, but that's not going to be the way it stays. Yeah. After we're out, then elections go for two years. So now people are saying maybe two years is better because then you will have a year to learn and a year that to you're be up there, to speed. And then yeah. it's up to the, the next town council to then appoint people that they want. So that's that's okay. the process we're going through. Great. So uh, the spirit of the charter is that there should be some residents on there. Mm -hmm. And the challenge for you at this point is to balance the, the question of putting them into the middle of the budget process, yes. is that fair to them and, and, and their contribution? But the letter of the charter mm -hmm. suggests that you would put them in, and um, so there may be um, some other ways of managing that around finding some people who had done budget in the past but are no longer? So that's, that's, that's a question that we have, and, and mm -hmm. that was posed at our last meeting was, should we just maybe bring on people who already have experience who could help us get through this process? But I think another line of, of thinking is we are now setting up procedures that will work from now to 200 to, years from right, now. That's right. And so there's some hesitancy to try to do something too quickly yeah. or to set up a procedure that says the president's going to do this. Oh, but later on it will change that charge. To somebody so that else. It's, yeah. So there's there's some. So there's two questions: that. Who's going to make these appointments, mm -hmm. and is this the right time to appoint residents? Yes. Okay. Yes. Got it. So let's leave finance for a minute and go mm -hmm. back to, uh, let's say zoning or planning, mm -hmm. which is in the purview of the town council. Who in the town council do you expect are going to make those appointments going forward? So those appointments are absolutely the job of the town council. These are town council mm -hmm. appointments. So um, my committee was set up to basically be a subcommittee that helps do a lot of the background work in, in looking at all of the people who apply and mm -hmm. then bringing names forward to the full town council mm -hmm. to vote on. So the recommendations of your committee go to the full council. Yes. And at that point the full council by a majority vote will decide who to appoint. And these I would also so yeah the, that is very true and I would say that when we're, we're trying to figure out the process for this because this process has to be very different than it was in the past where mm -hmm. legislative branch you know we are open yeah. you know open meeting laws something that that we definitely need to adhere to yeah um, so th it's a it's that's a an, different it's process. a very interesting distinction because the select board was executive mm -hmm. And if they were making an appointment, it was the executive making an appointment, which is where traditionally in government these kinds of appointments get made. Right. You are a legislative body, and so now there's a question of how do you do that properly and appropriately. So we, we're, we want to make sure that you know, we make people, that we have you know, 
people that are residents feel very comfortable in applying for these positions, that they want to be engaged in this process. We also need to really keep an eye on transparency mm -hmm. because that's something that's really important. And so we're, we, I think, are very close to finalizing our process to how to appoint people. But it, if when you look at it and when you see it, you will see where a lot of it is um, as much of it as possible. A lot of it's in public, mm -hmm. um, which was important to a lot of people. Um, and is your application a public ap application, or is that a private document that the only the town manager and eventually the town council will see? So the, I think the way that it's looking right now, and this again, this has not been nailed down at right. all. Um, and our viewers should know that we're having a conversation uh, here the 1st of March, right. and they may be seeing this show three or four weeks from now, right. and some decisions may have been made. Yep. So you're giving us some this context. This kind of gives you the context of how we went through our thinking process yeah. so that it, it makes sense to people. Mm -hmm. So in the past, um, in a different form of government, when we had a select board, um, those all the CAFs were treated as personnel files. Okay. Now that so and that had to do with this like being an executive body, right? That's at the application. Yeah. Um, so things are sort of different now, in, mm -hmm. in which you know they may not be completely seen as personnel files because of the fact that we. It's not completely this, but because we are legislative, we are very subject to open meeting law. There are certain steps along the way where we do need to bring names forward. So I believe mm -hmm. there will be something on your CAF saying at a certain time in a process, if you have been if you have been chosen, if you're a nominee that's being for, being brought forward with other nominees, then the thing in the things in your CAF and your CAF may be will most likely be made mm -hmm. public knowledge. So once you are basically a semi-finalist or maybe a finalist, mm -hmm. it may become public, which is what happens in a lot of uh, important jobs in mm -hmm. the public sector as well, yes. because um, at some point people need to know uh, who you are and what your f views right. are, etc. Um, so once the application is processed and there's a list, I'll give you the process. I think we have, but Beautiful. it needs to be finalized okay. to make sure that it's completely legal. Good. So you would send a C. We'll talk about uh, planning and zoning. You're like, I have to do this. This is amazing. Yeah. You fill out your CAF online. You send it in. Right now it goes to the town manager. Now, what we think could happen, but we're not 100% sure, is that the five members of OCA would be able which to... Which is your committee. Which is our committee. Yeah. Sounds kind of organic. We loved it. <laughs> um, kind of like a vegetable. So we, what we're, we're proposing is that entire committee be able to see all the CAFs for this, for each particular committee that come in. We see the entire pool. Yep. With open meeting law, it is absolutely important that nobody talk about those names. We can see them, we can take a look, we can kind of see what they do. We cannot discuss with each other or anyone else any of those names. Mm -hmm. What we're also hoping will be possible, but we're not completely sure, is that one member of our committee, and it's to be determined if it's a chair or not, would then be able to, with the help of um, perhaps we would want to have the chair of that committee be on with us. Mm -hmm. Maybe we would want to have a staff liaison. They could come into the interview process with this one OCA member, mm -hmm. my committee, Yeah, we would have interview questions, right, that would be set up and would be public and would will never change forever mm -hmm. and ever, amen. So everybody's being asked the same, same questions. Same questions. And also, mm -hmm. so say we really want to have the uh, chair of the committee there because the chair of the committee could be able to tell the person who's applying, this is what our committee really does mm -hmm. and this is how much time it takes. And these are the things that you should really expect because I, that's really important for someone applying to know. And sometimes it can be a little daunting or mm -hmm. it can be really exciting. So the, the, the other people who would be there with the OCA member do not ask questions. They're not asking questions. They're not the interviewer. They're, they're not part of 
the process for choosing. Mm -hmm. So then after, we will be interviewing everyone. We are asking everyone, including existing members of committees, to also fill out a new CAF because they've changed a little bit and we're starting new. So then... And when you say you'll be interviewing everybody, every candidate for that position who's filed an application? Yes. If there are 30 people who have said they want to be on so zoning. So everybody is going to get yeah, to we'll that come in. stage. Yeah, come on. Come in. Yes. It? Yes, we want to make sure that it okay. feels fair and people feel heard and that when they send in a CAF they're taken seriously. And then from that point after the interviews, then a, a finalist list would be created. Yes. What happens then? So, that's the point where things definitely become public. Mm -hmm. So, um, I'm not 100% sure yet. But I believe that, say, there's one position open, we would need to bring, uh, or whoever is interviewing would need to bring two people to the Outreach Communications and Appointments Committee. Mm -hmm. We do that, and in that point, it does trigger, um, it does trigger a, a public process. Right. Because the, that's the job of the committee mm -hmm. to come up with the recommendations for the full council. Yes. At which point, after that point, after that interview and discussion. Yep. The committee makes a decision and moves it to the full council or for consideration. Or they can kick it back. They can say, they can kick it back to whoever the interviewer was. Say it's the chair. We're not satisfied. We they need say, Sarah, more. I don't know what you were thinking about that okay. morning, but no. Mm -mm. Okay. They cannot, none of us can ever mention names because that would yeah. be inappropriate. Right. It would be, you know, we all agreed on, on what we think that we want from, from someone else's committee. We need uh, experience. We also decided we really needed someone who, I don't know knew the effect of swallows on buildings, right? <laughs> you didn't bring this to us, yeah. right? So those are the kinds of things we can talk about. This committee has agreed ahead of time, made public what we're looking for. You didn't bring this to us, and then they would reject, say, but the But you would hope that in most cases, the yes. council would say these are good candidates. The only reason I bring this up is because these, a lot of these appointments are powerful. Mm -hmm. And they're That's important. Right. And one of the things that I, as a chair, especially want to make sure is that we have checks and balances in place. So some parts of this long process, you might be like, oh my goodness, it's so long. Like, what, how are we ever going to get people? I also think it's important to take the time to make sure that, that everyone's feeling comfortable with things as it goes on. Mm -hmm. So if then my committee says, these are great, these are great names, then the people would be who um, were hoping to be nominees, who are nominees, would be told you will now have a, a public interview, um, your CAF will be public, and then it goes to the complete town council. council. So that's where that's where nominees would then be brought. Keeping in mind that if then the full town council thinks that they don't they don't Agreed. know where our head was at, yeah. at, at Oka, they can it say it could bounce it back too, and they can go back. So there yeah. is safety, I feel, in place. Right. Yeah. Bringing people yeah, the forward. whole point of having the full council vote is not to just rubber stamp the work of a committee. Respect the work of a committee. Yes. But if you see a problem, you raise it. Exactly. And uh, move on. Now, what about the process? Do you folks have any hand or role in the process on the town manager appointments, or does he continue to make those appointments? in the way he has traditionally made them because they're in his mm -hmm. control, which if I recall includes the um, Resident Advisory Committee yep. that uh, helps the town manager sort out the candidates for various appointments that he has. Uh, is that process likely to stay in place? And do you have any role in that as uh, you Yeah, folks? we do have a role in that. Okay. Um, there are some things like, again, you, it's just crazy, but you kind of have to take each piece. So yeah. the resident advisory committee, the way it is written into the charge, the charter is that they are the town manager's committee and his appointment. So there's, that's so, what it says. So they sort of operate like your committee does in relation to the town council. The resident advisory committee operates Do that for way. for Mr. Balkelman okay. for his appointments, right. for his appointments. Okay. And um, I believe that the thinking right now is the way the, the charter has set that up, that that's fine, that Good. that Mr. Brockelman will take a look, see who he wants, appoint them, and then they will be there. They will help him with his mm -hmm. appointments. Excellent. Uh, so um, what is the role of your work with the 
staff. We only have a few minutes left, so I just want to touch on on the outreach and yeah. communication side of this. Uh, what is your work and role with a couple of staff people who have been named to work with your committee around outreach and communications? Okay, I, before I do that, I just realized that I didn't say, there are some other appointments that the, that the town manager makes that it does make clear that the town council has to evaluate and confirm. And ratify. So we don't, we have no idea how that's going to happen yet, but some of his appointments is there do need to be. Is there discussion about sending those nominations to your committee before it goes to the town council? Or it is on likely our agenda to, to okay. figure out how to do that. But honestly, right now, we're really trying to, to figure out one process. Yeah. We're going as fast as we okay. can. So we should we'll, stay tuned on that yes, one because, because that's that interesting because you might end up repeating the whole process yes. a second time or maybe coming up with a, a process or coming up with a hybrid yes put exactly so keep, somebody keep, from yeah, your committee that, on the resident because we're not just yeah. okay we got to keep watching that we have one minute left so outreach very important something that we are going to be um, forming a subcommittee on in in our meeting our OCA meeting on Monday it is very important. It is to help town councilors with their setting up their district meetings, their office hours, getting information out to the public. It is also to reach out to the public to let them know what positions we have available and to help bring them in. So very important. Which takes you back to the appointments it does. process. So the only way for appointments to know that they're really doing outreach, right, is mm -hmm. to see how their outreach is coming in. Oh, we have 45 applicants for yeah. one. So yeah, it's very important, Good. and we're, we're trying to get up to speed on that. Well, that's terrific. You have a very important committee. <laughs> and by the time people see this, a lot of decisions will have been made. But I hope that you will now understand some of the thinking that went behind those decisions. And in uh, the bottom line is, if you want to get involved, go online, fill out the application, know that the town manager uh, will have uh, responsibility for making sure that the town council gets mm -hmm. to see all of those through mm -hmm. your committee, and that be prepared to be called in for an opportunity to have a face-to-face -face discussion mm -hmm. with your committee if it's mm -hmm. an appointment that's going to be made by the town council in the end. Correct and um, that uh, there will be an open, transparent, consistent process. That's what I want. And that there's, there's <laughs> several steps, mm -hmm. so it isn't one person or one stage making a decision. It goes through a process, so there's a, a, a appropriate amount of vetting and appropriate transparency in that process, so that once people are appointed to these very important positions, people will have confidence that they were well vetted yes. and are well suited to do that job. And it could be you. <laughs> so fill out that application <laughs> and, uh, and get involved. So thank you for joining us and thank you, Sarah, for being here. That went by it's fast, a didn't it? Yes, it did. <laughs> it did. Thank you. Okay. Very good. Thank you. See you next time.